Hey guys and welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing the Inside Kylie Cosmetics three-part docuseries released on Kylie's YouTube channel in July and the subsequent Kylie Cosmetics rebrand that followed. The series covers like the history and the relaunch of the brand so this video will be like a review of the episodes and a kind of extension to my downfall of Kylie Cosmetics video that I made in December. So before we start make sure you are subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss another upload and don't forget to leave a like on this video if you do go on to enjoy it. So to start off let's talk a little bit about the series itself and why they've made it. So Kylie has always been one of the more private members of the family. She was very young when keeping up with the Kardashians started so obviously a lot of details about her life were not made public on the show. She's never been as outspoken about her private life as her sisters obviously because she was quite young when she joined the show and the show has ended now that she is like 24 so she's not had a lot of years where she would want to be showing her private life on TV whereas her sisters have had like 15 years of that and she has kept some parts of her life private throughout her career for example when she was pregnant with her daughter Stormy she only announced the pregnancy following the birth so she took a year off social media but Stormy does actually feature quite a bit in this series so I'm going to come back to her later and because of this a lot of her fans were interested in this series because it gives a kind of behind the scenes look at the brand in a similar way to the Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star Beautiful World of Jeffree Star series did where you can see the back workings of the brand and obviously seeing how well that did it's not really a surprise that the first episode of this docuseries has 5 million views not as high as the Shane and Jeffrey one but still a significant number. Also about three months ago the brand wiped its Instagram completely and just said that something new is coming so that sparked the interest Ooh. that sparked the interest of fans of the brand because seemingly Kylie Cosmetics had gone offline completely. Uh, they then announced the rebrand was coming on July 15th 2021. For context there was some fallout after Kylie sold her 51% share to Coty because Seed Beauty the original labs that Kylie used had the monopoly for her formula so there was a lawsuit allegedly launched against Kylie for sharing that formula with Coty therefore if Kylie Cosmetics wanted to continue to sell products they had to change the formula so why not make it a big deal and do an entire rebrand to try and build hype around Kylie Cosmetics in the same way that it had when it first launched. So let's start with episode one. One interesting note to make before we get into the context of the episode is that the like to dislike ratio is turned off for every single episode and all the top comments are overwhelmingly positive but from looking at Kylie's channel it seems that she has likes and dislikes turned off on every single one of her videos so it's not trying to hide backlash it's just the way that she has her channel set and one other thing I want to say before we start is that while I was watching you can tell that Kylie actually does genuinely have a passion for her brand and her makeup and I'm not trying to fault her on that at all. I think it does come across that this is her passion project but having said that I did find some things to nitpick at because would this really be one of my videos if I wasn't nitpicking at something? <laughs> so episode one starts off with a kind of note to say a film crew was granted access to Kylie's world for exactly 48 hours as a celebration of the relaunch of Kylie Cosmetics with fully vegan and clean products excellent marketing if I must say so myself because we also saw how well the conspiracy palette sold following a docuseries about the inside world of Jeffree Star Cosmetics so no doubt this series will raise sales and create hype around the rebrand because more people are aware of the rebrand and Kylie Cosmetics has not experienced that in a long time. At this point I would pay vast amounts of money, well the vast amounts of money that I have to get to take a business class from Kris Jenner because love her or hate her, the woman is a genius. Kylie starts, starts her sit down interview by talking about her love for makeup and her makeup journey, particularly focusing on her insecurities around her lips that led to her creating the original lip kits. And Chris also talks about how, you know, when we struggle with an insecurity, it can then spiral and seem like a much bigger issue than it is, which I would agree with. I think a lot of times we have insecurities that other people would not ever even notice or think about. But one thing I don't like about this whole kind of insecurity TED talk is the fact that Kylie lied about having fillers for a very long time and made so many young girls insecure about their lips because they didn't naturally look like hers when everyone was making such a big deal about Kylie's lips. Chris 
talked about how awful the online bullying was for Kylie and how people talked about the one thing that she was most insecure about and whilst obviously this is horrible for anyone to go through, they just completely gloss over the fact that people talked more about Kylie's lips after she had them done than they did before because they seemingly suddenly grew overnight and she was claiming that that happened naturally. So people were kind of looking at before and after pictures and going, well, that doesn't make sense. Rather than before she had the fillers, everyone was just like laughing at her about having thin lips. And I'm not saying that Kylie brought on the comments or the bullying in any way or in any way deserved it. But what I will say is it doesn't sit right with me to tell this sob story about an insecurity that you got fixed and then lied about, resulting in the many young girls who look up to you then developing the same insecurity and buying your makeup because that's what you're selling to them as the quick fix. Like if she'd just been honest, people would have had so much more respect for her than they did when she finally admitted that she had actually had filler. Like Kylie is lucky enough that she can afford to fix any facial or bodily insecurity that she has, whereas for the vast majority of people, that's not the case. So it's really difficult when someone has so much influence but acts like it didn't come from a place of privilege of being able to make yourself look like Kylie or her family. It goes on to this kind of speech about how Kylie took the negative of the bullying and her insecurity and turned it into a positive, which is great for her, congrats to Kylie, but I don't like how it's portrayed as if she did all of this from scratch with nothing but determination because Kylie has come from such a privileged position to have such a large following who would buy her products and be from a family where her pocket money is enough to fund the startup of a massive makeup business. A lot of the comments on this video are comparing like what the viewer was doing at age 17 to what Kylie was doing, which was starting her multi-million dollar business. And it's like, okay, it's funny to look at, you know, I was in school and this celebrity was living in a completely different world to me, but at the same time, the sheer volume of comments like this is a little bit disheartening because ordinary 17 year olds do not have the same resources that Kylie had to be able to start their own business. She was not self-made, she had the pocket money given to her, even though Chris said she had to use her own money, that money came as pocket money from her family or from being on a TV show that she only had the opportunity to be on because of her family. And she had all of the connections that her family had already laid out for her all the makeup artists, all the people in the industry who could help her. Like she has a business mogul for a mother. She has a personal makeup artist and industry connections who could guide her through every step of this business. This was not like an inspirational backyard project. She did not start this in a shed in her garden. This was one of the most influential and wealthy families on the planet using what they already had to expand their empire. Like the product that she came up with, all credit to her, was simple but genius. You know, lip kits and liquid lipsticks became all the rage and despite other brands recreating the same idea, every time you think lip kit, you will always think Kylie Cosmetics before any other brand. The idea was there, which obviously is the main part of any business. If you don't have an idea, then connections are useless because the idea is pretty much everything. In this situation, the idea part is pretty much the only thing that Kylie did herself. Like Chris says that she made Kylie use her own money to start the business rather than the family's money, but again, the amount that she had in savings from being on Keeping Up With The Kardashians would be astronomical in comparison to the wage or pocket money that an ordinary teenager would be earning. And episode one ends with kind of a recount of the first launch of Kylie Cosmetics where everything sold out in less than a minute. And honestly, I think this first episode is a very smart move from Kris Jenner because it's retelling a story that people already know, but in a way that kind of invokes a emotional response in the form of nostalgia by reminding them why they loved this brand in the first place and why this brand is so special and therefore why they should start paying attention to what Kylie Cosmetics is doing now without actually saying that. Like, there's no mention of the rebrand yet but the full explanation of how people were always interested in what makeup Kylie was wearing and how excited they were for the original launch is a reminder to the fans of why they supported Kylie Cosmetics in the first place because they love Kylie and they love her makeup. So episode two. Episode two is more of an insight into the creative process that Kylie goes through and also the people who really made this brand a success. Although I have some qualms about this episode that I'm gonna discuss in a bit, I am aesthetically pleased by the mood board that they have in the background and I also really want to be able to walk into places with as much gaslight gatekeep girl boss energy as Kris Jenner does at some point in my life. And I do think this whole series obviously is Kylie being bigged up because they want to sell you the Kylie Cosmetics dream but a lot of the praise that she's getting is for behaving in a way that 
any other CEO or brand owner would be expected to behave. Like they're praising her for being involved in choosing all of the colors and choosing the packaging. And while it's great that she's giving up her time to do that, that can be said for every influencer brand. You know, the influencers at the center of it, it's their brand, they are creating the products. And don't get me wrong, Kylie Cosmetics is a lot bigger than most influencer brands apart from maybe Jeffree Star Cosmetics. But whenever one person is the face and the brains behind the entire brand, I would kind of expect that they're the mastermind behind everything that the brand puts out. Like I don't feel personally impressed by the fact that Kylie chooses the colors of her own products rather than having someone do it for her, but you know, maybe that's just me trying to nitpick. And they then go on to talk about Kylie's work ethic and how long she spends on each product. And look, I can respect the fact that she is passionate about creating something to be exactly right. But how is she sitting for eight hours in business meetings about products and then sending out glosses with brushes that are in complete tatters, highlighters and blush components that don't have any product in them. Like personally, I would much prefer a proper documentary about the brand that had been started to be filmed right at the start and followed the brand's entire journey rather than a series that just tells the audience about how great the brand is and ignores all of the mistakes rather than going over the mistakes and talking about, you know, what went wrong, what have they learned, how has the brand come back stronger? Like, I think it's so much more enticing when a brand can show through actions how they've improved rather than just talking across three episodes about how fantastic Kylie Jenner and her brand have always been when things haven't always gone to plan. One thing I've taken away from this episode in particular is that Kris Jenner is really the person who's behind the success of the business because from what it seems, Kylie could not and does not handle the business side of things. She is not cut out to be a traditional CEO because the only involvement that she wants is to be in the creative meetings with, you know, designing the products, designing the packaging, designing the campaigns. She doesn't want anything to do with the business side of things and like the numbers stuff. It shows how much of an advantage Kylie's family really is because it's not just about having money, it's also about having a parent who's been running businesses for pretty much her whole life and it knows exactly how everything works and can take that weight off Kylie's shoulders so that she can just do the fun stuff. Like most people don't have that option. I know if I started a business, my mum would have like probably less idea than me about how to run a business. So it's not an advantage for me. Whereas for Kylie, she has a veteran business owner in her corner. And it's a complete contrast from what we saw with Jeffrey in his Shane series, where as much as personally I don't like Jeffrey, you can see the real passion he has for his business, which he runs. Like he has teams of people who help him, but he has so much more involvement in the everyday running of the business than Kylie, whereas Kylie seemingly turns up picks the shades and shade names and then goes home. Like, there's a section in the middle of the video about strong women and female empowerment, which obviously is hugely important in spreading the message to women that they can do whatever they want and, you know, have big dreams and achieve those big dreams. But honestly, I don't want to make the Kardashians a symbol of female empowerment when they have done so much to alter the beauty standards expected of women to be something that is almost impossible to achieve without surgical enhancement, and which has then in turn shaped the insecurities of so many young women. They have set the expectation that every single woman to be attractive should have the perfect hourglass figure with a tiny waist but a huge bum and huge boobs and big lips and a beautiful face which only like 0.01% of women actually naturally have and that's not the fault of Kylie Cosmetics of course but Kylie and Chris being praised for showing female empowerment by being strong women doesn't sit right with me when they have negatively affected how so many teenage girls see themselves. There's also the talk of how Kylie is an inspiration for being like a mother and a CEO which I mean props to her for running her own business with a young kid but let's be honest most companies would not promote a woman to the position of CEO if she had children the same age as Stormy and parental responsibility because so many companies and industries are stuck in their ways and are very kind of old fashioned rather than progressing with the times. It's hard to feel inspired by her when she has so many privileges that actually allow her to be in that position when an ordinary mother would not have those options or the odds at least would be highly stacked against her becoming CEO and then be able to be a mother whilst being a CEO and then being able to bring your kid to work and entertain them. Like, I would love for that to be the norm and maybe one day it will be, but it's also unrealistic to say that Kylie's situation is something that an ordinary woman can aspire to when it is so incredibly rare. Like, she brings Stormy to work with her every day. Stormy has her own, like, playroom at work. 
no one else would be able to do that unless they had their own brand which was as big as Kylie Cosmetics which there's just not that many female run brands that have that option and Chris talks about how Kylie brings Stormy into meetings and how if she's in the middle of something important and Stormy wants her attention then she will drop everything to give Stormy that attention middle of the most important thing in her life at that moment and if Stormy walks into the room and says mommy I need you she will put that on hold and turn all of her attention you know to her daughter in any other job would this not get you like fired this is not something other people can aspire to or relate to because they could not do that in their workplace also why is she letting stormy walk into business meetings about what chris describes as like the most important thing in her life right now am i wrong for thinking that the child should maybe be put with a childminder if she's having a business meeting about something that important rather than just letting the child like wander around the business meeting. Stormy has her own collection which apparently she worked on with Kylie and I know this is a Kardashian child who will never be a normal kid but why is she involved in the business? Why is her name on makeup products when she is literally like two years old? Like maybe it was Stormy's choice and she loved it but from the clips it looks like she was more interested in whatever was in her hand than the papers with colours on that Kylie had laid out for her. Like it just seems to, a bit weird to me to be making business deals with a toddler and business ventures in collaboration with a toddler who has not even started school yet. I do think though that all the talk about Stormy being in the office and Kylie's close relationship with her was put in there because of the upcoming launch of Kylie Baby which is mentioned in episode 3 because it lets them know a bit more about Kylie, about Stormy, about their relationship and it lets people see Kylie more as a mother figure than a makeup mogul which may then persuade them towards buying her baby products. Uh, you may say that I am a conspiracy theorist but Kris Jenner is involved so I don't doubt that every single thing that is in this series was put there for a reason. Uh, also undoubtedly Stormy will be the face of this whole Kylie baby line and to go back to what I was saying earlier I just don't like how much this child is being used to promote business ventures like I know obviously there are many child actors, child models that sell this kind of stuff and if Stormy wasn't the face of this then another kid would be the face of it but I don't know, it, just, it seems like Stormy is being used by Kylie and Chris as a tool to promote their business uh, more often than she should be, I don't know. I know she's going to be like on camera for her whole life, she's going to be followed by paparazzi for her whole life, but I would just kind of wait until at least she has the choice of whether she wants her face to be all over makeup products or baby products, but I don't know. So episode three, the final episode, this is where they finally start talking about the rebrand of Kylie Cosmetics and I find it very interesting what they said but I'm gonna get onto that now. So Kylie starts off by saying that Kylie 2.0 was always the plan which of course she would because this whole series has been about how successful Kylie Cosmetics is so it would be a bit out of touch with the other episodes to then say that they're rebranding because sales fell but I do think the dwindling success of the brand is the real reason for the rebrand. As I said in my other video about the downfall of Kylie Cosmetics the brand just has not had the same hype that it had in 2016 since 2016. She has of course learned a lot over the last five years and I'm not taking that away from Kylie but the brand has been declining for years and I don't think a rebrand would have happened had the sales not dropped. And there's a lot a lot of talk of like evolution and re-envisioning things but honestly the rebrand just isn't significant enough to warrant these descriptions like tweaking the formula and changing the color of the packaging just doesn't change the product it's not like they've cancelled all of their lines and are going in a completely different direction it's purely an aesthetic change and a change to try and appeal to a wider audience by going clean and vegan which i mean any brand going clean and vegan is great, like I would love for all brands to be clean and vegan. Mac, I'm looking at you, but the actual products themselves just haven't changed at all. One small thing that did make me kind of chuckle to myself uh, was the talk about making sure that the formula lasted for eight hours and the reason that this made me laugh is because I have multiple Kylie lip kits from 2017 which are probably expired but for the purpose of this let's pretend that they're not because I'm wearing one right now and I'm not kidding when I tell you that that shit does not come off. Like once it is on there, it is on to stay. Like I put this on today just to see if my memory served me correctly, right? So I put this lip gloss over the top of it because they are very matte. And normally when you put a lip gloss over the top of a matte lipstick, a little bit of color transfer will happen. But look, 
I don't know if you can see it very well. This is a really dark purple and there's hardly any colour transfer at all. At the end of this video when I finish filming, I'm going to time how long it takes me to scrub this off because my god it takes so long. I have never had a lipstick like it. Once this stuff is on, it's like super glue. Like it is stuck. It does not leave. So I don't know how they're like promoting this as a great change because I'm pretty sure that this was already like many hours of wear. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure whether they're talking about like increasing or decreasing the wear time to eight hours. Two seconds it took to get that off. Uh, like they've talked about how they announced the rebrand, which I was surprised was actually Kylie's idea rather than Chrissy's. But Chris's because obviously wiping the brand's whole Instagram and posting a cryptic photo one week later, it's mysterious. It's intriguing. It gets articles written about it and gets people talking. So clearly Kylie has learned a few things from her marketing business mogul mother. And there was a quote from one of the interviewees where she said that Kylie flipped the industry upside down because she was engaging directly with her fans. Uh, you know, she was always the one debuting the product. She was showing them exclusively to her biggest fans on her Snapchat first. And I do agree that she had an impact on how some brands interact with their customers on their platforms, particularly influencer brands. But I don't think that she can take all the credit for that because brands like Jeffree Star Cosmetics and Kat Von D existed way before Kylie Cosmetics did and operated on a similar model where the center of the brand was a well-known person with a community of followers who see them as like an estranged friend. If anything, Jeffree did it better than Kylie because purely when someone's full-time job is to be a YouTuber and that's where most of their followers are, naturally their followers feel closer to them than a mainstream celebrity because of the parasocial relationship that YouTube creates and due to the insights into the lives of your favorite creators that you get through their YouTube channel. I do wonder if Kylie saw how well Jeffrey has built his kind of cult following who buy all of his products and whether that influenced her to start her YouTube channel and post makeup content and post lifestyle content on there as a way to make her fans feel closer to her as an influencer and therefore build the same close community that a lot of YouTubers have that then will buy more of her products, but I don't know. I also don't think that Kylie's impact on big brands was very pronounced outside of the lip kit trend purely because there's never been a face to put to those brands. Like MAC, video on the downfall of MAC coming soon, by the way, so keep an eye out on that. Benefit, Too Faced, Morphe, etc. There are some name brands like Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, Natasha Denona that even though their brand is named after them, so in theory they are the centre of the brand, the same way that Kylie is, they didn't follow her in doing this because they don't need fan interaction to sell their products, the products sell themselves. Kylie goes on to talk about why she sold half the company, which was to have a bigger infrastructure to go global, which obviously makes sense because you need people behind you to make that happen if you want to be up there with the well-established worldwide brands like MAC, for example. And it's interesting, the company was sold obviously in November 2019 and we haven't really seen any move to globalisation until now with the rebrand, like Kylie is finally coming to the UK after five years now, which I would have thought would have happened earlier because obviously the UK is kind of a big uh, player on the global market, but obviously we've had a pandemic so moving into physical stores in different countries was not a good idea when all those physical stores were closed and I don't doubt that the decision to hold off on that kind of globalization was purely out of uncertainty and instability in the future of physical stores rather than anything to do with the brand itself. It ends with a kind of reminder about what they said in episode one about Kylie building this brand from nothing and how she didn't take the easy road etc and Look, I don't doubt that she's worked hard over this past five years, but this brand did not come from nothing. It came from someone who had the privilege of 24 hours a day and enough money to work on a passion project and turn it into a full-time job. Most people do not have that option, and that's why Kylie and her team fail to recognise her privilege. Building a brand takes hard work, and having the time to put in that hard work 9 to 5 every single day from the very start is a privilege that few people can afford. Chris said, does say that Kylie was born with privilege, but she used the tools given to her, and that was her choice, which 
I kind of agree with, but I don't think any of them acknowledge the privilege of time. They're talking more about like money and connections when actually having the time to work on a project is probably the most precious privilege there is because what's the point in investing money into something if you have no time to do anything with it? So that kind of brings us to the end of the documentary. So I have a few final thoughts that I wanna share with you. So first of all, very smart marketing, as I've talked about throughout, they're very good at subtly pushing customers towards being excited for the rebrand. And they're very good at giving you that feel of listening to a friend or an ordinary person in the street talk rather than an alleged billionaire. Let's not even go into that, which makes you feel more connected to Kylie on like a personal level, which as I've said, helps her build a community of dedicated buyers. In terms of the rebrand, obviously I'm glad that they're going vegan and clean, I'm all for that. However, I am disappointed that that is the only change they have made. They had such an original and genius concept to start the brand, but everything they've done since then has just felt like you could get it from another brand, either at the same price with better quality or cheaper for the same quality. Like it's felt like you were paying for Kylie's face on the packaging rather than for a good product. The first full collection they're releasing is a 24 karat gold collection for Kylie's birthday. And listen, I love gold, but this collection is exactly the same as every other collection that they did for the past five years. There's a couple of lip shades, there's some liquid eyeliners, an eyeshadow palette, a highlighter. The only thing I'm seeing here that I haven't seen in a collection before in my memory is the all over body glitter. And nothing about this is new or exciting. Other brands have been doing this for years. Like, it's like they've made this whole huge deal about this rebrand and then all they've done is change the formula rather than doing an actual rebrand and doing something different with Kylie Cosmetics. Like, they could have done what Morphe did and just changed the formula without telling anyone. But instead they've made this like huge deal about how they're rebranding and changing everything and then just changed nothing. Also, not to mention the packaging. Why is the branding for the collection Kylie naked covered just in gold glitter? Like, why is there a half naked photo of Kylie Jenner on this eyeshadow palette? I know for me personally, that would put me off buying that palette because I wouldn't want to take it anywhere with me. I would not want to open my makeup drawer and see a half naked Kylie Jenner making a questionable face every time that I wanted to do my makeup. Honestly, overall, I don't think the documentary or the rebrand has changed my personal opinion on the company. I've learned more about Kylie than I have about how her brand works and that's where the series falls down for me. Like, I was expecting an inside the factory type docuseries about the making of the products and how the journey of the brand has gone and all their kind of mistakes and how they've come back from them. Not a grand total of less than half an hour of people just telling me how brilliant Kylie Jenner is. At least with Shane and Jeffrey series, you did actually get to see some of the inner workings of the brand. Even though it wasn't one long glorified advertising campaign, you did get to see how the brand works rather than just people talking about how great of a parent someone is, which has absolutely nothing to do with the brand itself. I feel like I've done a lot of complimenting of Jeffree Star today. So a quick reminder, I do actually not like Jeff Jeffree Star and I will be filming the rise and downfall of Jeffree Star soon. So don't worry, I have not joined his cult following. That That's the second video that I have plugged in this video. Like I really think I'm getting to grips with this YouTube thing now. So that is everything that I have for today. That is all my thoughts about the Kylie Cosmetics docuseries. It's not actually very long. This video is actually probably longer than the whole series. So I've not saved you any time in not watching it. I've actually probably wasted more time by making you watch this video instead of her videos, but I hope that you enjoyed it anyway. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment with any thoughts you might have and make sure you are subscribed down below so that you don't miss an upload. I will hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye guys.